and exchanging hugs with friends, which is pretty much a given for everyone. So what other things are you looking forward to that you've really been missing? I, I tell you what I, I miss is I need a pedicure. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I miss that. It's like one of my great, that's one of my like great things that I indulge in. Probably my only thing. Uh, so I've been missing that. I did, I did have one this year. I had one and that was uh, right uh, after Burl and I finished our quarantine and we knew our antibodies were still good. <laughs> but other than that, we haven't been doing any of that stuff. Um, let's see. Uh, there's a, a puzzle in a book nook. It's Sitting, it was supposed to be in here, but they changed it. It's right outside that door there in the hallway. In fact, I should turn on the light. So the books are just starting to come in. So um, take an opportunity today and go out there and see if there's anything that you might be interested in reading. Uh, just return them back here. I can't promise that you're going to get them back, but I'm, in good faith, I'm expecting, I'm expecting the books to come back after they've been read. And uh, if you have your name in them, that might help. And also, um, that we're going to offer that to the daycare, too, to see if any of the daycare staff would like to uh, read or uh, donate um, books and puzzles as well. And then uh, the Brethren Press Lentil Devotionals for Lent um, are in the, on the rack right here outside the office, if you like a devotional. They are always good. They have one writer for every devotional is only one writer for the whole book. And so that's always kind of gives us a new look at some of the scripture passages for Lent. And then of course, you're gonna get a different look as well uh, when we have on Roll Ours, uh, Roll Ours out. And that is gonna be on 214 next Sunday is uh, they'll be in your mailboxes. So I think we had 21 this time, which we really could have used like 36, but you know, you can't push the envelope if people don't feel called to write them. But they've been so good. I've been, I actually have been reading them as I trying to put them in order. And then um, Dallas is compiling them into the book. So we thank her for that. How are we doing up there? Nothing yet. Oh my gosh. Oh my. Okay. Well, let me um Okay. I'm sorry, I'm just letting people know. The people, if you can let people know on your, if you're texting, um, I know Lori's, I asked Lori to text and I just texted on the Andersons. I figured they had a connection to a few people. We are going to have a good service. Okay. I'm done with that. Okay. Well, let's have a prayer. If anyone else has an announcement, do you have anything to announce? Anyone? Okay. Well, let's, let's pray. Oh, gracious God, we thank you. Um, we just thank you for today. And whatever issues that we're having uh, in that technical place, you know, uh, um, we just ask that uh, for all the people that were waiting and, and had a desire to be um, in worship, uh, that they might find a way to worship right where they are, uh, together or alone, and whatever that might be. Um, we thank you uh, that your spirit is everywhere. We can't, uh, it doesn't just reside right here in this space or on technology. And just, we just, um, we just ask that you be a, um, about this worship. Uh, pour out your spirit upon our hearts that it touches 
the places where we're um, um, having a, a, a hard time uh, reconciling things and whatever that might mean. And um, just give us a sense of peace and comfort in the midst of we come here just to rest and be. And may it be so. Amen. Okay, uh, you raise me up. That is our first song and um, from Brigham Young University. Thank you. When I am down and oh my soul so weary when troubles come and my heart burdened be, then I am still and wait here in the silence until you come and sit. Yes. Okay, can you let people know we're live now? Okay, I'm sorry. I have to let people. 
Okay, just give me one second. All right. Welcome to all of you uh, who are up and running. I'm not sure if everyone's on yet, but uh, we'll get started with our opening song. I don't want to continue this because we're going to have uh, communion. and I mean, I want to continue this because we're having communion, and then we have Sunday School Zoom, and I don't want to get in the way of that as well. So, Be Thou My Vision. Um, so keep her in, in your prayers, and uh, and we'll uh, we'll honor him. Um, we'll honor him during our memorial service uh, when we honor people who have died uh, in the, our in our lives. Uh, let's see. Um, Tammy had the new baby. And Carmen's family keep them in prayer. How is Emily doing, Bev? Okay, it's Oh. Okay, sure. Okay, so Emily is doing well and she is I'm um, going to court tomorrow um for half time of her um daughter Riley. 
And um, uh, is that a promising, do you feel like that's a promising thing? Okay, so it's promising. And then Riley um, has been through a lot of trauma in her life. And, and what is she, eight or something? Oh, wow. Okay, I'll lose track of people's ages. Riley is 11, so she's been through a lot of trauma. And that could really come out at this age, too. And so um, we just lift her up. She's seeing a counselor. Uh, this week she's um, being assessed so to see how she's doing so keep that in prayer um, you know for the, uh, Linda and Mike Bird we don't get to see them but they're in our hearts and our prayers a Andy and Dalton and Gretchen uh, next uh, next week is Dalton's birthday next Sunday actually on Valentine's Day uh, Eleanor Hawkins for her leg pain um, she's recovered from COVID and let's see you know peace in the world we all want that peace in the world and for our church and for other churches that are suffering. I, I see there's so many churches that still aren't open and, um, and some are open and there's a divide in the midst of it. And that makes me sad for them. So keep that all in prayer. There's a, there's a lot of churches like that. Okay, let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you for your spirit that touches upon each and every one of our lives here uh, for all the words and, um, and all the things that we're doing, um, the words of our mouths and the meditations of our heart, uh, you might uh, speak to each and every one of those as uh, we release them into, into your world, um, that they um, bring back uh, more goodness than went out. And so we thank you for that. So we lift up everyone on this prayer list. Uh, for the spoken needs and the unspoken needs, uh, you, you know all about those. And so we just ask that you speak to each and every one of those. Um, wherever someone is in their life, and uh, just um, for our world um, that seems like so out of control and so um, racked with chaos, uh, but you're faithful and stable, and so we just lift that up, that we know that love uh, conquers all, and justice is, um, this is the way uh, of your universe, and so we, um, we continue on that path. Help us to participate uh, where we feel led, that you open the doors of opportunity to make it uh, easy for us to, to um, be a part of uh, your world and your movement in that world. You are in our midst, we have to always remember. And so be with us um, this week as we go forward and whatever we have planned uh, and the things that are unplanned. Um, help us to remember that you walk with us. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so now you're going to be listening. You'll never walk alone. Thank you.
Okay. Scripture reading this morning is from Isaiah chapter 40, verses 21 to 31. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads yeah, them like a tent to live in, who brings princes to naught and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth when he blows upon them and they wither. And the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me? Or who is my equal? Says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes on high and see. Who created these? He who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name, because he is great in strength mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God? Have you not known, have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles, they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Thus concludes the reading. Thank you, Mark. A man was walking along railroad tracks, and next thing you know, he got his foot stuck in a railroad uh, tie, and he was panicked. And he was trying to get it out and trying to get it out. Next thing you know, he heard this train coming. He could see it down down the tracks, and oh my gosh, he was just starting to just get so nervous. He was so nervous, and he started to pray, dear God, if you get me out of here, I will stop drinking, I promise. So, and, and he keeps wiggling it out, nothing is happening, and he keeps wiggling it out, and he keeps seeing the train get closer and closer, and he's wiggling out his foot, and he says to God, he prays again, dear God, if you, uh, if you get me out of here, I'll stop drinking, and I'll stop cussing. Oh, and nothing happens, and he's wiggling and trying to get his foot out and trying to get his foot out, and he prays one last time because the train is getting so close. Dear God, if you get my foot out, I'll stop drinking, cussing, and smoking. He gets his, he's working and working, and right before the train comes, he got, gets his, he works his foot out, and he, he gets, um, he rolls down the side, and he looks up to heaven, and he says, uh, thanks anyway, God, I got it myself. <laughs> This is one of our last week of Epiphany where we're celebrating God with us. That's um, Epiphany and uh, God with us where truth is always with us. And today Isaiah is speaking to them, helping them understand that God is with them. He's trying to convince them that God is all around. They can't understand it. How can you say that? They're, they want to know how can this be because we're in exile. We're not in our homeland. We're not with God. How can God be with us? And he said, well, look around and look at the power of God. A look at creation. And he starts naming. He's trying to convince them that God is with them. For them to be patient and wait that their strength will be renewed. He wants them to know that God has not abandoned them. I feel like for, for many of us, we feel like we've been abandoned in this COVID time. Um, it feels like we're in exile too. 
Well, we might be getting used to it, but at first it seemed easy and thought we felt like it wasn't going to be long, but it became such a hardship. And then people started dying and dying and dying. And we're in a place that we have never experienced before. We're in a place where life might look different forever for us. And it's uncertain what is next. The people of Israel felt that way too. And they started having these questions of faith. They started doubting God. And in the midst um, of the pandemic, I feel that we are doubting everything that we understand about God or thought we did. Why do you stay so silent? Why is this new strain coming and why can't we stop it? And where is it ending? And we want these answers. You probably all know Eli Weisel, um, who was a Jewish man who was just entering into seminary to be a rabbi uh, when he was taken into a concentration camp. And he had these same questions about his faith, a really faithful man. And he journaled them during that time uh, when he was in the camp. And he titled this journal Light Night, where it is published now in a book that he wrote. He was waiting on God too, angry at God for not interceding on their behalf. And we understand that. I'm sure all of us have been through places where our faith has been shaky and we're not sure where we stand and where, where um, if God is, is even in existence. You know, they say pastors have that worst, that is one of the worst things for them. That um, a few years back, probably a good, I don't know, seven or eight years ago, um, the Goshen News had a big article. I think it was that or the Elkhart Truth, I don't remember. But one of the local papers had a big, a big article about um, uh, pastors um, and their walk and their faith journey and how, um, how, a lot of them still didn't, they're still pastors, but didn't believe in God anymore, but was able to use the language in their preaching. And that's how, that was the worst scenario. And then they talked about all the scenarios. So we can understand that in our struggles, that we don't understand God at all, right? But when you read his book, it's all about his journey in this doubt and this, not, uh, this uncertainty about who God is. Because what he said is, he never stopped believing there was a God. He never stopped believing. But he stopped believing that God was all powerful, and God was all, know, all knowing, and God was um, in existence everywhere. And there was this time when it came to him. And I don't want to go through it, but it was because it's pretty gruesome. Um, it's a pretty gruesome, gruesome image of what it could be, and we can only imagine. But there was some big event happening in the, in, in the camp, and everybody had to come out to witness. And it was so awful. And he heard one person in the crowd say, for God's sake, where is God? And Weisel says, and I heard a voice within me answer him. Where is he? This is where, hanging here from these gallows. And I read in a commentary that when he said that, he didn't mean that God was in the suffering, but he meant that God was dead to him. But that wasn't true, because he never believed God was dead. I read in an interview he did, um, probably in the early 2000s, um, that he never gave up on God, but he had a different understanding. He did not have a doubt about God in existence. But this became a, a place where his faith began to change, that he was on a path to finding God in a different way. I think doubt is a healthy aspect of our faith. I mean, we did the living the questions 
a few years back. We ought to do it again because we have so many newer people. What a wonderful, wonderful study that was, living the questions. And people, we had scholars, it was um, on a CDs, remember, and we had scholars talking about their faith and how they saw the scriptures. And we talked about all those traditional languages that we use, resurrection and redemption and Trinity. That was all a part of that. And it helped us. It helped us broaden our thoughts about who God is. This is where Ellie is, where, where he where he's finding himself, but he's finding it in himself. This is the time in Epiphany where we look for truth. We are at the end of Epiphany, and the wise men went out to find truth, and we are always seeking truth about God's mystery. But we're, when we're really in a bad situation when it's really, when it worsens, and we cannot even get close to God. That's where we hit the bottom. See, people wanted rescued. Isaiah, want, the people Isaiah was speaking to, they didn't, that wasn't helping them to know God was with them. It wasn't helping them because they wanted saved. And they wanted rescued. That's what Ellie Weisel wanted. He wanted for his people to be rescued. And he found himself in this life with just God and himself, wrestling with these questions, where are you in this midst? I have to say, that's probably my, the most atrocities, and we've had so many that I, I feel like I, I, hard for me to ever reconcile. I've never reconciled any of that. And um, yeah, and so I get what he's saying. So I come to, in a different place. Dr. Michael Ray of Notre Dame, he's a professor at Notre Dame in theology, speaks about this in his paper, Divine Silence and Divine Holiness. He says when God is silent and we're waiting on God, it is because God wants us to be in communion together with God. I don't really like that, but there's something about when we are in a place where we can ask questions, when we're not so down, that we're not so, we're not so, so in the most bottom rock place that we can, we can believe that God still exists and we can ask. And there's something about when we're in this connection and this communication with God and ourselves that there's something that happens in that mystery with God or holy or the universe or wh wh however you want to call God. There's something in this movement that is there happens to be goodness. There's a goodness where, because God is always aligning us. He's always aligning us with the universe. God is always aligning us moving, having the movement of the universe move towards goodness and justice and peace. And so God is always moving. I want you to listen to what Ellie Weisel says when he's talking about his communion with God in his prayer. And he says, you take words, everyday words, and all of a sudden they become holy why? Because there is something that separates one word from another. And then you try to fill the vacuum. With what? With whom? With what memory? With, with what aspiration? So when words bring you closer to the prisoner in his cell, to the patient who is dying on his bed alone, and to the starving child then it's a prayer. And he's saying that in this time of questions, 
in this about the identity of God. He is finding God in the midst. He is finding God in the ministry. That's where he begins to see who God truly is. That's powerful. And we grow in this mystery of God. We grow in the understanding that we don't really know anything, right? Or we only know some things about who God is. Michael Ray goes on to say, in our search for the truth, sometimes we have to allow God to be God. Allowing God to be God. With no expectations of what we want from God and what we desire from God. How does that work for us? Because we know God is with us. And we continue to live out our lives faithfully, knowing God is with us, even in our lowest times, when we don't have the essence of what it might be for God to touch us. We don't have a sentiment of God. We don't feel God ushered into our lives. We continue to be who God has called us, who Jesus models for us, doing the things that are faithful. And we don't give up hope. In this darkest time, in his darkest time, God helps Ellie comfort the people of the camps. God uses Ellie's own tenderness and gentleness to bring God to the people of the camp. And in that, Ellie finds God in himself. It's a powerful move. It's just a powerful statement to have your tenderness and gentleness become God to somebody else in the midst of all that suffering. The best we can do is be that. And it's all in God's grace. And when we're not able to do it, we allow others to be that in our lives. We use the language, the Trinity, and it's only to understand how God works in our lives. And I want to just say briefly that God is not only out there, you know, out there around us in space, around us, between us. But God is within us, and God is in our collective body between us. So we have God in the creator and Jesus in the life between us and the spirit of just um, bubbling up inside of us. And so we know that God can speak to us in all different ways. And to be a part of God's life can come from a word from someone else and we don't even know. It's part of who we are. The same spirit in all humanity resides in us. And as we sit in here in church or we we have a faith tradition and we follow that and understand it and we grow closer to each other, we're growing closer to God. We're growing, God is growing inside of us greater. And we can understand the movements of God in the world, creating ways for us to be God in the world. Sometimes we have to have hope. When we don't see God's movement, God is always creating, always creating, moving, like I said, with that alignment in the world. And we don't always see it, but we see other people. We see changes and transformations. We see people moving in directions. We know God is working. Sometimes I love those human interest stories on the news, and I sit, and I think I talked about it last week, where a story just really took me by surprise, this wild story of the Spirit of God. Ellie abandoned his expectations of God, and there he found God. 
in the midst of it, the worst scenario anyone could be in. I want to leave you with words to chew on from Ellie about how he spoke to God in this time and realized he gave that up. It's, a, it's good chewing things for me. I've been thinking about it since, since I read it and put it in here. I no longer ask you, and that's capital U's he uses, capital Y, excuse me, for either happiness or paradise. All I ask of you is to listen and let me be aware and worthy of your listening. I no longer ask you to resolve my questions, only to receive them and make them a part of you. I no longer ask you for either rest or wisdom. I only ask you not to close me to gratitude, be it for the most trivial kind, or to close me to surprise or friendship. Love, he asks, love is not yours to give. Powerful words to chew on. Amen. We're having communion now. Uh, Jolie's a deacon, and she's going to help me serve. And um, at home, we'll be blessing the elements um, that you're using at home. And we're going to do one at a time here because I noticed the last time we did communion uh, that um, when, I, when we passed them out both at the same time, there was an awkwardness about trying to get the piece of bread out of the baggie and hold your juice cup at the same time. And so I don't want that awkwardness for you. So let, let's pray a prayer blessing over the elements um, of communion. We thank you, gracious God, um, and we ask that you just pour out your spirit upon us as we partake in this, reminding us of um, the goodness of Jesus and um, uh, the love that is between us. And we thank you for that. Um, help it to remind us that you strengthen our spirit uh, daily and uh, renew us, that we can um, uh, rise up uh, like eagles with wings to soar. And that's what we're all... Um, we're all wanting now. We all want to feel free. And we just uh, thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, we'll start with the bread. Oh, no, that's the cup. Sorry. <laughs> thank you. Okay, thank you. words of affirmation in your bulletin will you take the bread and you can repeat with me the bread that we break is the communion of the body of Christ and you partake now thank you to all of you 
Thank you out there on YouTube. Or you um, speak the words with me uh, for the cup, and you'll find that in your bulletin. The cup that we bless is the communion of the love of Christ. You can partake. Julie, how about if I pray, and then you can do this while I'm doing the, uh, the last song, okay? Okay, let's uh, pray a prayer of thanksgiving. We, gracious God, we thank you that you, um, you are who you are, and we are who we are, and uh, help us to always remember that you are always with us. And we can't always pinpoint or decide who we expect you to be, but we know that, you, that your love resides in us and all around us and in each other. And we just give you glory for that. And we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. We will be, um, Julie's going to be collecting our baggies and um, our cups. So, and we're going to be listening to Take Heart, My Friend, Fernando Ortega. Defender in the 
receive the blessing for the road. Holy Spirit, with astonishment, we see that you renew our strength constantly. Allow us not to forget your presence, even in adversity. And in our turn, we will renew our gratefulness and we will sing of your love. Amen. Go in peace. Thank you. Thank you, guys.